what's up Freedom Family, this is Mike from the game development team here in Freedom and today we are here to talk about our own game. So about one month ago we've made a video asking for people uh, with interest in making games if they wanted to join us as we make our first game here as Freedom. And we've selected our best application, those people are part of the Freedom Family and today we're going to be showing you exactly what we have done um, thus far after one month. So the first step in making a game, whatever game it is, you have to go through a concept phase, which goes, uh, it's a simple phase basically, it just says what exactly are we going to, what, what direction are we taking with this game, where is it going, what's going to be the gameplay like, how is it going to look, all that kind of stuff is uh, what we've been doing last month basically. So today in the video, I will be talking about our GDD, which is our game design document. We're also going to be talking about the art direction, so what exactly the game is supposed to look like, uh, in terms of what we're trying to achieve and our limitations. Also going to drop a word in there for recruiting because we still need a bunch of artists. We need artists, UI designer, um, just like modelers, riggers, or just animators, anything really. We still need a bunch of artists. And at the end, I'll be talking about more technical stuff. So if you guys are into game dev a bit and you want to know some, some of what we had to go through to get where we are right now, um, then you should stick around till the end of the video because we're going to be talking about that giving you some insight that might help in the future, who knows. So let's get started right away. I'm going to pull a chair and we can have a look at the game design document together so we can actually tell where the game is headed and what concept decision we've decided to take. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So like mentioned, we're going to be going through the game design document really quickly just to give you a feel of what exactly we're trying to achieve here with the game. Our code name for the game is called Age at the moment. Of course, that is a code name, so it's going to change in the end. We're going to have a different name uh, you know, for the final build. But as for right now, we're looking at a game that is a idle game. It's a game that you can almost play as AFK. It is a building strategy game where you gather resources over time and then you just build your empire like this. You expand your empire and you conquer um, other players' empire. So basically you're trying to take over uh, your whole area around you. If we just go down a little bit in the game design document, we have the core gameplay loop, which is just to collect resources. And using those resources, you can build, you can upgrade, um, that is for your town of course, you can build some of uh, some more farms to get more food, you can build a barrack to recruit some units, you can build altar to um, actually resurrect some heroes you can be using as well. So it's all really about this building mechanic and then using whatever you build, you are going to progress uh, in different aspects of the game. So if you build more resources generating, then your town is really going to be about uh, generating resources. If you build more combat oriented town, then you're going to be about conquering other people and then just stealing the resources so there's a way to actually balance it out depending on which path you try to take. We have the scene flow down here which is just going to help you understand how exactly is the game structure. So we have a preloader, that one I won't get into too much. Uh, we have a authentication screen and uh, we also took screenshot from other games so we're not making RuneScape but we really like the way they authenticate because they're using both Facebook and Google+. Plus. Now if you log in with Google you're going to also have access uh, to your freedom stats and you're going to be tagged as a freedom partner. So we also have the user creation, same thing, that's just a normal scene. And then you have the lobby in which you're going to be looking at the overall status of your account. Uh, you're going to be able to see your main troops, that's your, your main combat unit troops, and just see how they're doing, what's their HP at, what's their status. And then you have the game scene, which is where most of the building happens. So right here we have a screenshot of Elvenar because that's really how you're going to be placing your building. So you're going to be in that kind of view laying down your building. We'll see a preview of, uh, of that later on, we already have it in our prototype. If we scroll down a bit, we also have the world map, and this is something that is going to give you a lot of definition in your game. When you create an account, when you start your town, you're going to be randomly placed in a grid like this, and that grid is infinite basically. So you're going to be placed in a grid like this, and you're going to have neighbor. Um, some are going to be NPCs and some are also going to be players and those players you either want to ally them or you want to be conquering their land. So if you're better than them you can use them to generate resources and then you just steal it once in a while or um, if you want to ally them and conquer other places, build up your guild, build up your clan, you can also do that. For this specific scene we do not want to have a, uh, a game like this, we don't want to have like a grid that is flat, we want to be in a 3D environment so it feels more immersive, so that's why we put another um, we put another thing right here, another image. As far as the combat goes, not everything is set in stone right now in how we're going to be fighting, but we want to have a um, few lever in here, so like a lower player or less uh, advanced player can still have an edge over a good player if they plan out their strategy properly. 
So there's going to be like few levers in here. We have the combat triangle, something we see in a lot of games. So you have some levers such as if the player you're trying to fight has a um, has a troop, you've scouted the troop, you know that he has a lot of mage in there, you want to have a lot of French unit because they do good against those mage. So there is a few things we've been looking at, the uh, Leaf Angels 2 combat, but of course nothing is set in stone right now for this aspect. We want to make sure it's really really fun because it's one of our core um, core gameplay here, so we want to make sure it's fun. We still have to iterate through it a lot more. And guys, that is also where your feedback are going to kick in. So if you have any feedback for us, if you have any ideas, suggestions about the combat system, please leave them in the comment section below of this video. Now you might be asking, what makes us special? Like, okay, you've mentioned those game, they're already there, they already established, they already exist, so what makes your game, the freedom game, stand out? Well, the answer lies, um, it's all around one thing, really. There's multiple things that makes it great, but um, it's all around one thing, and it's the fact that we have a 3D environment. So what 3D environment is going to allow us to do is to actually immerse ourselves inside of the town that we've built. So you're going to be placing your buildings around, and then you'll have the option to go on foot and actually go there, interact with the colliders, interact with the building uh, while you're actually walking through your town. We really love the idea of having a third person perspective and we want to push it in a genre that people don't usually use it there. So um, it's something we want to innovate on and actually push it right into that genre of game. But then you might be asking again, uh, what's the point of having a third person perspective? Okay, it's cool if you can just uh, immerse yourself in the town, but is there a point to it? And there actually is. We want to be installing mini games inside of the game that is going to give you more resources, give you uh, some research skill, give you a lot of advantage in the game. So you're going to be able to say play five mini games a day if you're uh, a player, a normal player, 10 mini games a day if you're a freedom partner, and those are going to give you resources. So just on top of our head right now, mini games could be like you're you transform into a crow and you can actually fly through your city through circles. And if you manage to just go through all the circles, you get X amount of resources and then you can actually keep on building like this. So this is just one of the idea. Of course, we have a lot of mini games, and since it's a 3D environment, we are not really restricted to do anything here in terms of minigames. Also, having a 3D environment is going to help us with every other aspect of the game, such as the combat aspect. We did not really dwell on it right now. We do not have like a clear plan exactly what our combat is going to be looking like, but since we have this 3D perspective, we can give it a lot more flavor and a lot more uh, just intensity, basically. So um, this is what the 3D environment allows us to do. It opens a lot of the gate for everything that we want to do and could make the game fun. But guys, let's actually put that on the side right now. I would like to talk about the art direction we took. So the art direction, we want something that is really low poly. We want something that is really soft looking, low poly. We can have some easy animation and we want something that looks a little bit more medieval. So we're talking about the medieval era. We want castle, we want swords. We want that feel for our game. And here are some preview of the art we're trying to achieve. So it is some really low poly stuff. And something that is really important to us is that this right here and this down here does not have any texture. Even this does not have any texture and it's something we're going for because it is going to help us save a lot of uh, CPU power and also a lot of RAM. Now the reason we went for something that is low poly and also something that does not have texture is simply because of performance. We are in a browser, we have a limited amount of RAM we can use, so uh, just loading up that RAM with texture is something we don't really want to be doing. We already have the RAM full of sound already, so we have sound. We do have the ideas of implementing texture later on, but as for right now, we want to have a minimum um, graphic settings playable build, so everybody can play it. Most of people can play it. Anybody with a recent browser can play it, basically. And uh, later on, if you have a good PC and you want to have more um, fun experience, more immersive experience in the game, we plan on adding texture, but first we are going to just make sure we have the minimal build, right? So that is pretty much the only limitation we have is only performance and the fact that we're running through a browser. So let's take a look at the current prototype we have, the current gameplay we've made thus far. So this is our game at the moment, as you can see right now, this is the authentication screen. We are going to go ahead and just create a new account really quickly. Let's do something simple. So um, simple at freedom.tm, password123, create. And our nickname is going to be, let's use my Andolf now. Oops, nerd mine. Once we log in, we are sent over to the lobby. Now, if you guys remember, the lobby is where we're going to be able to see our troops. So those five slides right here are going to show 3D models of our unit and also their status. 
at the top here, uh, we can see our resources. Now, of course, those are all debug values, and also those are not the final UI pieces. Um, and then we get just more information about our account right here. And this is also where we load most of our data. If we hit play, we are sent to the game right now. Now, this is where we're going to be building our town. At the moment, it is on a fixed size, so it is a 15 per 10 grid, but later on, we're going to make it expandable. The reason there is water around it is just to give you like an idea, a visual idea of where you can build on and what you can't build on. This is only for development build. It's not going to be like that in the end build. So depending on how far the player has made it in the game, if he brought any land, like any um, expansion to the land, you could go a little bit further on the right. You can be a little bit further on the forward axis as well, but you can expand this grid later on. So let's get started and build something. We are going to build a lumber mill. Now it looks like this, we get a nice little preview right here, and let's just build it right in the center of our town. If we zoom on it, it assumes the actual uh, preview building model right now, which is something we do not have at the moment, but if we click on it, we do get information that this is the lumber mill, and we're also done building it, so let's hit complete, and as you can tell, it just pops right here. Now as soon as it's completed, it starts gathering wood on its own, and we can just say complete, and gather this wood. As you can tell, our resources went up. This is also through for the server side, so in the server side you're also getting that request and everything is completed. Right now the values are on 5 seconds, so every job that we do is 5 seconds and that's only for testing purpose. Of course, the game is not balanced right now. Let's hit upgrade to see what happens. When we hit upgrade, the lumber mill level 1 has a new job called upgrade to lumber mill level 2. Let's hit complete on that. As you can tell, it changed the model and now this one is on gathering wood level 2 so we get a little bit more resources so this is just some kind of way to make your building more efficient of course when we build the thing it had a cost and upgrading also has a cost let's check out some other models such as the farm so right here that's the farm let's wait until it is done and we're gonna hit complete as you can tell this is now our farm it gathers food and so we don't really want to have it at level 1 let's hit upgrade wait until it is completed and once it's complete you're going to have the farm level 2, which has, of course, a different model as well. So this is the current mechanic we've got working right now. Everything that you see right here is done both on client side and also server side. So there's no weird timing where uh, you start saving your data randomly. As soon as you do a change, it is being reflected on the server side. Like mentioned earlier, we want to be able to immerse ourselves in the actual environment here and be able to just walk around the farm, walk around the lumber mill, walk around the mine and just have a good feeling of how um, we could just navigate through the town that we build ourselves. So to some extent, you could even make uh, some obstacle course and you just run through it, depending on what you really want to do with the game. And it adds up to the building mechanic of our game. So this is the current state of our prototype right now. The next step we want to be taking is uh, just immersing ourselves. So we're going to start creating our third person controller, be able to just move around. And then after that, we're going to be looking to um, creating buildings that recruit troops so a barrack to recruit some pike units some range unit that kind of stuff is what is coming next to the prototype and that pretty much resumed the first month so we have done the concept well we like to say we've done the concept of course we're going to be balancing ideas with you guys uh back and forth here in the comment section below so make sure you leave your comment your suggestion in the comment section below so uh, we can actually read them and if we feel like we're not going the right direction you might have a better idea we are going to redirect so nothing is really set in stone and that's going to be true for the whole production of this game. The team is also open right now to have modelers. We need a lot of low poly modelers. It would be even better if you know how to do vertex lighting. But if you don't, we can teach you. We're a happy, friendly team, so you can just join and um, help us make this game. Help us make this thing come true. We also need some 2D artists really bad just to make the UI feel a lot better than it is right now. You probably could tell our UI feels a little bit bland right now. So we're still looking for somebody to help us draw those buttons, draw those icons and just help us with the general feel of the UI and we're also looking for an in-house uh, hairdresser here in the Freedom Office but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the update video I hope you guys enjoy give us your actual suggestion down there and um, leave us a like we always appreciate likes click on this video right here to be up to speed with whatever we're doing right now and I will see you guys very soon cheers <laughs>